Hey, what is up, YouTube? It's Rich. I thought I would do a quick tutorial on um, inking metal. Um, we've got, I believe, Colossus with, with a, a funky headband. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's Colossus. He's a he's biker Colossus. But um, I was trying to think of, of something that I hadn't touched on here. And uh, I was looking at this piece. I'm just kind of warming up for a second here. We'll throw this line. Just kind of get it in. Um, But, um, yeah, it was like, oh, you know, metal would be kind of cool. There's there's definitely a little bit of a a different way that you approach pr approach it compared to different materials. M materials is like a term that you'll hear a lot more in concept art. I don't know if I hear comic book artists kind of mention it as much, but it's still something that we think about. I'm just making sure that my camera is, is still in focus. It gets a little sketchy. I apologize if it goes out of out of focus here and there. Um, but materials means like the the difference of how you might ink um, his chest area compared to uh, Wolverine's arm that's flesh and hair um, and metal and, and a bandana. Um, you know, this is like a, maybe a metallic jaw up here. I think you can see that. But um, yeah, those are all materials. And and um, when you add texture maps onto 3D models and stuff like that, um, you use different materials. And so if you're doing traditional art or even digital inking, um, you need to be mindful of the materials that you're working over and uh, try to give them unique uh, personalities. So... Um, for metal, I mean, you want to think shiny and liquidy and, like, that the the detail is just kind of flowing over the form. Um, I'll do a lot more um, sort of big and small. And uh, I call it, like, the blip bloop thing. But uh, I'll push down on my... This is a Hunt 102 that I'm using, and the ink is Ultra Draw. Um, but I'll push down, like, a little heavier and get, like, like some wetter ink. kind of want, like, a little bit of a... a a shine right there. I'm going to pause the camera for one sec. My cats both went out of here. Um, and let me just do this and then this. But yeah, I'm I'm approaching this. I'm going to clean off my nibble. I didn't. Let me pause this for one sec. Okay, I'm back. Um, but yeah, so um, and David's got some. This is a, a Finch a blue line. Um, but uh, David's got some real kind of fun sort of shapes and stuff in here. But again, thin and thick. I mean, you know, like things that you could reference to get an idea of what the textures look like would be any kind of like chrome bumpers and stuff. Um, e even glass. Um, I'm trying to think. And you'll see, um, like Adam Hughes, I think was I, I always kind of credit him for um, really having um, up sort of everyone's like um, vinyl, like the black vinyl look. Um, he he got real into it on his um, Catwoman covers, and I think he'd been kind of dabbling in it be before that. But he definitely set like kind of a new precedent um, for for that look of like how to ink like shiny like black latex um and uh you know people still i think to this day are kind of like whether they realize it or not are kind of influenced by um how he approached it um and uh sorry my my desk is slanted so a lot of times the page will slide i'm gonna auto focus here for a sec but um yeah it's it's like it's kind of cool in a way how um one artist's sort of um, fascination with getting good at a technique, all of a sudden other artists latch onto it and um, then want to um, sort of have their own pride in um, doing the same, uh, not not necessarily the same exact technique, but but it, it creates an attention to it where it's like, oh man, bootlaces, yeah, you know. Uh, normally I wouldn't draw boot laces or I just kind of sort of fake fake them and then someone does like great boot laces and then everybody's on a boot lace <laughs> bender. And that's just the way it goes. It it moves faster though now. I'm telling you, like like trends come and go really, really quick. Or I don't know if they go quick, but but uh 
Yeah, I mean, it's like if you're working on a technique and you kind of want to make it special, I'm putting just a few little shinies there. Um, the, the, I just push down the nib and put little things. But, um, yeah, if you want to do something unique on a project, I would definitely say, like, keep it hid <laughs> until it comes out. Because by the time you get done with it, if it's like a 60-page book and you work on it for three or four months and you're showing people what you're up to, by the time it comes out, like, if it's something cool and different, people will be emulating it. But, uh, yeah, it's those little combinations that, that will make your stuff unique at this point where it, it's like, um, most techniques have been done to some extent or, or another, but it's like, if you combine really good metal with uh, <laughs> the boot boot laces and then you've got nice vinyl and uh, you know what I mean? Like you kind of create your own uh, focus combo pack of, of what you are going to be good at. And uh, that and also the structure of how you create your characters, you know, like there's sort of um, proportions and stuff like that, you know, like... Um, I just I always think Jim Lee's a simple example. It's like Jim Lee has a certain set of proportions of how he draws like a male face, just as a simple example. And if you draw your eyes that size and that distance apart and use the same little, they're called ciphers, but, you know, like, oh, he does three little lines for his eyebrow and then the thicker one, um, you know, you can basically sort of emulate his... Um, thing but 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 uh, a, a good idea or a better idea would be to um come up with your own proportions for things and and that way um you, you have a, a a little bit of a better chance of um doing something that that's a little bit more uniquely yours And sometimes it's just natural. Like some people will draw bigger noses or sharper noses or a hook nose or um, their eyes are a little bit bigger than some other artists. or the way that they draw a chin is a certain way and uh, all, all that can, can make their work um, a bit unique just based on that. So... Again, because I'm not inking this for David, I can go in and do more of sort of, I don't know if you want to call it finishes, but but I can go in and kind of play with the textures. Because remember, some, some of these videos were, were going to be basically like adding hyper detail. So um, it's okay to um, put things that aren't there for the example that, that I'm doing. And I'm actually going to do another one of these today for Patreon that will be different and cover some other techniques. I've got, I've got probably close to 90 unlisted videos for Patreon of all kinds of different things. And, and if you check it out for a dollar, you can get in and really get like a, just a ton of content that isn't on YouTube. Well, it is on YouTube, but it's unlisted. So it's worth checking out. I'll have a link in the description box. I don't want to overly plug it. Um, but uh I, I wanted to kind of keep the ball rolling on YouTube right now just because um, the channel seeing growth and YouTube does like you to post frequently and it definitely will help uh, build the channel. And as I move into the Blaster Kid and Denizen, like um, crowd, crowdfunding campaigns, I mean, YouTube will definitely be very pivotal in uh, helping that become successful. I've been checking out the um, La Muerta one. I follow Brian Polito on um, on YouTube, I guess. I can't remember the name of the channel, but uh, someone had suggested it here on YouTube, actually. And they said, you know, he kind of flies under the radar, but he has real um, successful crowdfunding campaigns. I mean, but he, he definitely has like a, um, a pretty loyal fan base and one that goes back quite a long time. I mean, he'd been doing Lady Death since um, before I was even collecting comics. So I know that that, that and Chaos Comics um, had been around for a while. Um, so, but uh, yeah, you know, um, he's pretty good at, at, at uh, doing those. I can't remember what my point was of bringing him up, but uh, mm -mm 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 -mm. 
Again, like thick and thin, liquidy, a few little double lines, um, kind of like a, I'll reverse my lines. Like sometimes I'll throw them like one way, like, uh, and then I'll, I'll flip it. So it might go like, like this way and then this way and then this way. Stuff like that can sort of create little optical illusions and nice little patterns and stuff like that. So, again, if you're doing metal, um, you need to understand the form that you're putting it over and not do stuff that, that uh, I, I, uh, I give some lessons on Patreon. And uh, there was a, a, a artist that's an inker, and he was curious about um, putting uh, white into blacks. And I really gave him... Um, a pretty in-depth lesson on form because that's how you decide anything in inking is you're, you're, you're either putting black or you're putting white over form. So it's not so much like, Oh, I have this, this black area and I want to put white detail. Well, that doesn't really mean anything. The, the patterns and things that you use over this form and material is what really dictates what like lines will work and what won't. And uh, the more, sort of bad choices you make the um the, the the less likely it will be to really kind of blow people's minds so i'm gonna rotate this hit my little autofocus trying to make sure it's in the frame it's kind of a pain in the butt it's so like i said i've got the, the camera is facing away from me and so i can only kind of peek and see a glary sort of preview of what i'm doing and then i just have to kind of cross my fingers that it hasn't like auto focused on my thumb or something it has no um, <laughs> bearing on the video, but uh, this actually looks cool. Like I'm digging it. It's it's funny because I have two versions of this thing printed out, and they're just for inking examples. It, it's like people ask me questions on Patreon, and I try to provide some some feedback for them. Um, and uh, but ultimately, like the, some of these pieces end up kind of getting done, and it's like I should have done all the work on the other one, so I'd at least have a finished piece, but it's all right. Sometimes people ask the same questions multiple times. So anyway, but you get an idea of, of, of how that, like, liquidy metal looks. I'm try to... And then um, he's got these sort of bands of, um, like, wrapped metal that go over it. So I'm following the form of the anatomy, and then I'm having the lines kind of disintegrate where there's the most light. That was another question that that same uh, inker had asked is, is like, where do you break up lines and stuff like that? I mean, essentially it's, it's, you're either creating um, shadow or you're indicating light. So the thinner your line is, the more light is hitting that area and the thicker your line is. Well, in theory, it would be that there's shadow. There's a lot of stylization that goes on in comic books, though, for sure. Even, like, exterior lines around things are, are sometimes kind of based on real reality and sometimes are just more, like, stylized comic um, examples of, of it. And, and both work, but, but uh, y y you're better off if you understand why one is the is used and one isn't. Because I'll use things that I think are very gimmicky and that I don't actually even like. Um, <laughs> sometimes when I ink, but I think the piece needs it. That's the funny thing is, uh, you know, because I ink someone else's pencils, they may put something down that, that, um, I go, Oh, you know, this is kind of what, what people would expect here. And it's not really my taste. Um, but, uh, if I think that the technique is appropriate, as gimmicky as it is, um, I will use them sometimes sparingly. Like, I, um, I mean, a, a simple example to kind of sh explain what I'm talking about is, have you ever seen where people do feathering lines out of something and they take white paint and they go through the tips of the feathering? I, I can't stand that. I think it looks so, so, um, uh, just, it's, it's not, it's, <laughs> I don't know, what would I put it? it? It just, it doesn't make any sense. And it's completely style for style's sake. But very, very rarely I'll, I'll come to a place where I go, you know what, that actually kind of would work here and I'll use it. But I'm, I'm aware of the choice that I make, if that makes sense. But, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't like that technique at all. It was something that they did in the 90s, like to, to add more. I don't even know. I think, well, well, and what was funny is, is so I did something similar with, with um, 
pen, but but I would have the line disintegrate where I would actually draw it that way. Um, Travis and I would do it where where it would like the the line would fizzle out, but but it wasn't all like so. Um, uh, structured it would be more. Uh, it's like slightly more random. Has a lot more character to it. So anyway, that's I don't, I don't know if I would call that a rant, but yeah, you want to be careful with some of the things that you use because uh, it all sends like a little bit of a message in your work. So okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna have that end for now. Um, but anyway, so so yeah, you want swirly stuff. I'll fill in the blacks a little bit so you can see those those dark areas pop. And so this is a Kurataki brush pen. It actually is refillable and holds ink, um, but. I use them as a dip pen for filling in blacks and they work really good. It has a real firm, like they're synthetic bristles. And uh, I don't know what it is, but it really works good for filling in blacks, which is uh, something that I, I really don't like doing, especially on full pages. It gets really boring and kind of tedious. So, and generally you want to fill in some of your blacks at the end, because especially if you have to erase the piece, I'm mean, gonna really chew up the black that you've put down um, if you erase after um, you filled in all your blacks. So I generally will leave some, but look how nice that looks. And and what I would do is when this area was inked more, I would probably start to close this stuff out a little bit, like it would be less busy um, and some more solid shapes. I, think I might pull that in, have this go like this. And again, because I'm not having to appeal to David on this particular demo. Um, I can use my own sort of instincts on the patterns and stuff that I want to use. So, all right, smash the like, subscribe if you haven't, and uh, I'll be back with more videos soon. All right, thanks, bye. And share this. <laughs>